question I have is very simple. I got 15 minutes, and my role here is to ask you to answer a question, and that is, do you think like Sun Tzu? Now, how many of you here have never heard of Sun Tzu before? Oh, that's quite a number. Right now, let me introduce to you why should you be thinking like Sun Tzu? And of course, firstly, the first reason is that Sun Tzu is Chinese. And of course, he wrote this book, The Art of War, 2,500 years ago. About 2,500 years ago. And yet today, his book <coughs> is applied by people like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Akpolyan. Now, very importantly, of course, is let me introduce you that uh, Sun Tzu is, is Chinese. So therefore, his thinking all right, is a Chinese approach to strategy. And of course, the Chinese approach to thinking has one trademark. And often it is simpler than the Western, and it always works. Now, let's see, this is a chopstick. Now, in the Western, take a food. And when I was doing my law in, in London as a barrister, the problem I had, as I no problem, but taking the dinner is a problem. Because the West right, is complex, it's more complicated. Right? That's why I said, you know, when it comes to dining in the Western world, it is far more armed there. They, they need so many forks, so many spoons, and so many knives. Uh, secondly, the reason why you need to learn to think like Sun Tzu is the second reason is that you need to think clearly because the world is very much more, very much into turmoil. Look at Japan, three in one, tsunami, earthquake, nuclear threat. Now, thirdly, the real reason why you should be learning to think like Sun Tzu and Chinese way of approach to strategy is that unconsciously the West is also beginning to think like the Chinese. Now, unconsciously. And there is now emerging what I call a China model. Now, watch this. Do you remember this event? This happened on October the 6th, 2010, while President Obama was making a speech. Now, what is interesting really is not the event itself, it could well be due to coincidence, but it's the fact that Fox TV make a phrase and say that the mandate from heaven is withdrawn. Now, that is a very Chinese way of looking at such events. And of course, leaders ought to be thinking more like Sun Tzu. Why? Why should leaders begin to think more like Sun Tzu? Because the problem of the world in the Middle East, as you see, is that leaders of the world no longer penetrate into the heart and souls of the people. There is a divide between the leaders and the people. And therefore, you find that the rise of power, people power, leading to the fall of dictatorship happening in the Middle East. And why? You read Tao, you read the Sun Tzu, you realize a very important point you made right from the start of chapter 1 is that right, people abide by the Tao. And if you do lead by the way of the people, you should be in power. So leadership, in, in very importantly, is that you should lead by the way of the people. Now this is one of the cards I created. And you'll find that later on. I'll explain to that later on. Now, of course, you find the Bruce Lee. Now, Bruce Lee, how many of you have heard of Bruce Lee? One or two of you, right? Now, okay, it's much easier now. Bruce Lee is very famous for his two-finger punch. What do you call two-finger push-up? Right, that was a one-inch punch. But very importantly, Bruce Lee actually quoted, and you know, if you know Art of War, if you study Art of War, you know that Bruce Lee actually quoted from the Art of War. And Bruce Lee said, be water, my friend. And you see that Bruce Lee fights, his face flow like water. Now, you also find that the other war is present in Bruce Lee's style of fighting. Watch this carefully. And you find that it's written right, in the other war. That's why the other war is, is a text quoted by martial artists that they study other war in order to, be, to win competition. Now, what is this? Momentum. 
attack by momentum, realize momentum. And then you see, right, one, two, three, four, in momentum, rock against the earth. With a rock against an earth, an egg, you want the battle. Now, very important, of course, is that the principle of, Sun Tzu, of, of strategy by Sun Tzu was written 2,500 years ago. And yet, it can be applied in a modern world in a competitive context. Of course, winning is not so important, ultimately. Survival is. And you find that if you analyze the case of the race to Antarctica, the Scott team that went all the way to the South Pole, losing it, and then on the way back, all of them died. And when I was teaching this course, in fact, the Sun Tzu course I taught in NTU, right, I got my student to analyze these two cases, the race to the South Pole. And you find that the team that didn't follow Sun Tzu out of war died. Now, the team that won the race to the South Pole, Emerson, they actually followed the principles of out of war. After this talk, go back and check it out. Go, go, do just like what I say. And you'll find that if you compare the two cases, very clearly, the case, the team that died and the team that won, the difference, the explanatory factor could be the out of war. Then, of course, right, now we know, of course, the US is in decline, right? Of course, the US model was a Roman Empire. But if Hannibal, now Hannibal is very famous, right, for his journey across the Alps. He was working on the principle of surprise in order to win against the Roman Empire. And Roman Empire wouldn't have existed if Hannibal had at that time read and understood the art of war. Right? Why? Because you find that Hannibal is such a good strategist in order to win Hannibal, Scipio learn from Hannibal his strategy and use it against Hannibal. One explanation why China is now leading the world and overtaking America, one at the top, one at the bottom. Very simple. America, the Chinese knew that the only way to win America materially is using capitalism against America. Same strategy. And this comes from what principles also to Sun Tzu says it's very important that you should not repeat your strategy so that nobody knows how you win. Infinitely varied are your strategies and adapt your tactics to the enemy. So if you repeat the strategy so often, so much so that the Viet Cong could anticipate what the Americans are going to do next, then clearly they are the enemy will know how to respond. So for those who are in business, sometimes it's good to keep secret your business model. Now, this is where I learned from, from, from Sun Tzu. And of course, if you ask me, right, Sun Tzu, what is so unique about Sun Tzu? The unique of Sun Tzu is that it filter to downtime without any guy promoting it, no publisher promoting it. It's written, at the time when it was written, it was not even using brush and paper. It was using bamboo. Now, Bruce Lee, if you study Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee is now an icon. Now, one good test of how good and great a person is, is when he's dead and not around anymore. Does his personality still remain? Does he remain still as an inspirator? And I think Bruce Lee did. Now, Bruce Lee has one very important point. No discipline as discipline. Now, those of you who know martial arts will know that Bruce Lee, Wing Chun, teaching at Wing Chun School. But actually, the, the originator Bruce Lee tells you that he will incorporate all styles. No discipline has discipline. He would learn fencing, he would learn taekwondo, he would learn judo, jesus -so, and he would blend all this into his art of Wing Chun. So his is no style as style. And Sun Tzu would tell you that, right, have no strategy as strategy. So you see in Lenovo, when you go to India, they don't replicate the strategy in China. So no strategy as strategy. And for myself, for example, I'm not doing just Sun Tzu alone, but for some of them mistaken that. Right? 10% of my work is in Sun Tzu, yeah, the other 90% are other areas. 
And one of the things I'm doing now is port in the ocean. In other words, I'm, I'm doing a project. And how did I get an idea? Because I'm from Sunzu. No port as port. Put the port in the ocean. Port in the ocean. Now, if you think like Sunzu, you will look for precise informational signals. Now, let me relate this to you to a very latest innovation by American. Can you identify this plane? Anyone? What plane is that? F-22 Raptor. Now the real innovation about this plane is you can trace it right back the design to Sun Tzu 2,500 years ago. How? The, the true marvel of Raptor 22 is in the glass cockpit. Now this is the really innovative part. In a glass cockpit, to make it easy for the pilot to fly, right? Actually, it is a fighter plane. So you have the enemy, triangles, friends, and circles, so the pilot may respond accordingly. In other words, when you see the signal, the cockpit signal, triangle, you shoot. You see a circle, that's a friendly plane. They incorporate that in the design of the fighter plane. Now, what this Sun Tzu says in his outer wall. Now, read it very carefully and slowly. Now, Sun Tzu is not a book to be studied like a textbook. If you do that, you are wrong. It is to be digested, reflected, and then you have to walk the 10,000 miles applying it in the real world. Sun Tzu says, you see the dust straight up coming from a distance, maybe chariots. Dust, low and white, will be soldiers. Dust that are so scattered about, the enemy are collecting fire. Dust patchy and angry. Now, so you find, now Sun Tzu wrote that down as signals. You must develop identification signals. Now, thinking of Sun Tzu will transform you in any competitive situation. What is this? You'd be surprised, right? This is not my word. No, it's not my other word. Okay, the Chinese were playing golf. Yes, you do the Tang Dynasty. And other war can be applied to the game of golf. And of course, golf was forgotten in China. Right? During that period, there was real golf. And then you find that an entire book has been written by American on golf and the other war. Right? You find actually people outside of China. They are equally frenzy about the other one. What empire will return? Now, this is a very important point. I want you to have a look at this and make a guess what this picture is about. Now, you'll see that it's actually that patch here on the right are the fingers of a child. This is a pregnant woman. Now, Historically in China, to me, the greatest strategist is a woman, what I call the first lady emperor of China. And she's a master strategist, especially for the inner palace, politics, political strategies, first class. So you'll find that she will make her master moves on timing. So it's emphasized a lot on timing. You'll find in business, anything you do, timing is so, so important. <coughs> Shares, profitability, everything you do, timing plays a key role. And you find that, and I, I took some time to get this modeling for you. And what did, how did uh, she prevail during the Tang Dynasty? Now, Wu Zetian is her name. Right? She is the first lady emperor during the Tang Dynasty. And during her rule, China was one of the greatest nations on earth during that period. And during that period too, there was heavy Confucianism. And Confucianists were anti-women. And yet she rose to be emperor. Not only emperor, but thought of that to be, all right, what they call the highest level sage emperor. Now what, what you see is that she will make her move in a climb upwards. She will time out key moves when she is pregnant. When she's not pregnant, she's a nice, 
she will take commands from the emperor. But the moment she's pregnant, the emperor will give it to her. <coughs> now, just let me explain to you the background. Since so many of you didn't know of Art of War, as I anticipated, right? Art of War, they call it Ping Fa. It's brief. It's only 5,000 Chinese characters. According to one Chinese documentary, Sun Tzu took five years to write that book. Five years to write a book. And you'll find that although it's just 5,000 Chinese characters, there is nothing in the whole literature of Western philosophy, management, strategy that is similar to Sun Tzu. Now, let me explain to you the background to the book so that you can get an idea, the context. He was, so the book actually came from the period of the warring states during the spring and autumn period. So it came up all the way. Now, the game of golf disappeared in China, but other world remained as a key philosophy. And when he wrote the book, sorry, when he wrote the book, he actually drew on resources, he cited ideas that were 2,000 years ago in China. So altogether, right, when it comes to you, as 5,000 Words book is actually contained a wisdom, a long, deep wisdom of Chinese strategic thinking. Right, and of course, the, right, this is historical findings. He, re he wrote them on bamboo, and then you find that right during the spring and autumn period, that the states were in high competition, like now, a lot of competition. He wrote that book during that period in that context, and I was. And I'm fine, and now it's, it's moving to the, to the UK. I was invited to all, by OGB to teach out of war. And they were very glad that I was able to reduce it to 157 cards. And they actually right, built and, and, and used the cards to try and digest the key concepts of out of war. Now, what do you think is one of the reasons for such a rapid rise of China? in business, in economy. I can tell you it's due to the shows of other war entrepreneurs. The Chinese know other war code. They grow up with it, they live with it. Just like they know the three kingdom and all that. It's part of the culture. So if you want to compete with the Chinese in their market, you've got to study and understand the other war. And where you find fierce competition, the other wall will explain who wins. Now this is the close as possible picture of the real Sun Tzu. It's taken from archaeological find, the wood print, and then we've got this picture. And it's a print. Now he, that's how he looks. And you find that even in the game of football, people will use the other wall. And the next football game is going to come in Brazil, and there's a Brazilian soccer coach who actually introduced and will make all the players, Brazilian team, to read the art of war. Now, as US decline and China rises, the thinking a bit more like Sun Tzu would help you a long way to succeed. Mao Zedong. Now, why do we focus on thinking? Not enough to study the text. You won't get the flavor of it. I use the word internalization. It's very easy to lecture because it's 5,000 words. But it's very difficult to internalize the thinking. And the more you can do that, you can think like him. Mao Zedong. Right? What did Mao Zedong uh, did when he first saw Sun Tzu Bing Hua? He first flipped it open, he first read it. And he was reading the book, and his first comment was that Right? He thinks like me. Sun Tzu thinks like me. So if you, if you want to, right, our milestone is the great strategies who enabled China to prevail over Japan and eventually founded China in 1949. So if, if you want to think like a great strategist, right, not Tzu himself has endorsed it. So do you think like him, Sun Tzu? I hope you go back and reflect on it. Thank you so much.